Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are going to be making an oak leaf curtain tie bag. The first thing that you're going to need is you're gonna need a piece of quarter inch mild steel, quarter inch flat stock mild steel. In this case, I'm choosing something that's an inch and a quarter wide, quarter inch thick and six inches long. That is 31 mil by six mil by 150 millimeter long for you guys there across the pond or abroad if you're not in the United States. And I have marked it dead in the center, so I've put it in the half and half, so roughly 75 millimeters. You're gonna come right here into the center of the bar, and we are going to put a fuller mark. One end's gonna get drawn out to the stem, the other end will get forged. We are gonna forge that out into our actual leaf part. So without further ado, let's get to it here. So the first step in this process, we're going to find our center punch mark. So I went ahead and center punch marked it. And we're going to hammer straight down on those, just creating a little bit of a waste here. You don't want to go too deep with this at this point. Before we start drawing this down. We're going to have to get a little more heat in it, and then we can continue to set down that little shoulder there. The reason why you don't want to go too much at once is because you'll create a shoulder here, and when you draw it out, that can back flap over. You can get a hot, cold shut there, so you want to be very careful of that. Just get it hot enough to work. we're going to draw it right on out there. We're just trying to lengthen this stock up here. The math that I do in here as far as the conversions, get whatever is close in your country of origin to those measurements and you will have similar results. The only thing that will really matter on this, since these are just artistic interpretations, is the volume of material that you start with. Will determine how much volume of material you have left over. got that end where I want it. I'm going to start working it back up towards the leaf. We'll get it hot one more time and now we'll come in here and fuller that down a bit more. We're going to get it back up underneath here and we're gonna to continue to define that shoulder. Because now we can. We can take it down a lot further. Get rid of that. And now we can work out that shoulder a lot better. And that's really all it is to it. We're just gonna draw that out. And in this case, I'm gonna draw it out to roughly about eight inches long or 200 millimeters. We're gonna take and draw it out to eight inches long or so. That's gonna get us enough to wrap around and create our curtain tie back. So that's really all I'm looking for is to draw that out. Uh, so it will stick out beyond uh, the edge of the anvil. This is about six and a quarter inches wide, the anvil face is. So I'm just looking for that extra inch and three quarter out the other end. Once I achieve that, 
I'm good to go. So make it mostly even. We're going to go ahead and draw over the horn as we round this up, or we octagon it rather. And we've got some thickness here that needs to be drawn out, and that'll get us the rest of the way. That'll get us the rest of that way. So after you've got that all done up like that, I went ahead and clipped out and just finished drawing this out by hand here. Took me another two minutes or so to do that. Not a big deal. After you do that, go ahead and get it brushed nice and clean. And now we're gonna move on to our next part. So as you can see, it's over here from the shoulder out here. It's drawn out to where it's just sticking over roughly about two inches. It's gotta be close just so this way it matches the other ones that I'm doing. Um, and these are actually for my house. So uh, they could be whatever they really wanna be, but I still strive to make them look really nice and really close together. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this around and we're gonna start forging in the various elements here to turn this into an oak leaf. I'm gonna show you a pattern here In this pattern, I will, I will offer online available for you over at my website, blacksmithpds.com. Uh, you can go check that out. Uh, it'll be free. All you gotta do is just go over there, you know, and uh, just download it. It'll be a free download over there that I'll provide. But this is kind of what we're going for. This is a little bit more exaggerated. This is if something if you were gonna plasma cut these out uh, type deal but this is what an oak leaf looks like, or a white oak leaf looks like. Not all oak leaves look the same. You can do a quick Google search on your own. I hand drew this one, so it's not gonna look like any oak leaf that may you have seen from a picture that I saw. And so it was really close, really close from something I pulled off of Google search results, images. But if you want about this size template, you can go check it out over at our website, blacksmithpdfs.com. Um, and consider purchasing, well, getting that free download or even purchasing it in a template bundle. That would really help us out, continuing to produce this great content here. So now that this piece is good and hot, way too hot, almost on the burning side of things, basically just about burn it off, about burn it all off. We're just gonna take and draw that edge down. It was definitely molten. It could have been just about burnt, but we're able to save it. So you want a really nice rounded in here. You don't wanna go crazy with this. This is the preform that you wanna take and go with. Hopefully you guys can see that just fine. This is the preform you wanna go with. For the, to set up the rest of the operations. The rest of the operations, we're gonna use the guillotine tool again. If you don't have the guillotine tool, you can just draw this out wide and cut it out uh, with a chisel or something like that. So you can just, just fan this out into a much bigger version of this and then just cut that pattern out of it. That is a really easy way of doing it. I'm going to show you the forged method of how you can forge one. and uh, hopefully you'll like seeing that method instead. So we'll put this back up here. We're gonna take out our fullering dies here, or our large fullering dies. Be careful to make sure this leaf ain't burning up on us. Set it up on the top of the pile. Let me get a wrench.
We're going to take out these large fullerene dies, which were about a half inch or 12.5 mil each, and we're going to put in these smaller or quarter inch radius dies. Uh, and that's what we'll drive down our little lobes into the piece with. Now the quarter inch radius dies, again, this is just what I have on hand and what I'm willing to do artistically. You guys feel free to chart your own road on this project. Uh, it really lends itself to a lot of different artistic inter interpretation. All right, here we go. Going in, we're gonna take about, oh, half inch of material, 12.5 mil material off the front of it. Create a little nub. We're gonna come back about that same distance. Hammer in really good. As it gets wider, you've gotta hammer in deeper. Just remember that. Again. deeper and that's kind of what we're coming up with and the last one's going to be just right before the shoulder by about three-eighths or half an inch in front of that shoulder and we're going to get it hot one more time and draw those down just a bit more that is how you preform this if you have a power hammer with guillotine dies in it. It could be so much easier than what this is. Uh, I'm just using with what I've got right now hooked up in the new workshop. We'll get this good and hot. One more time. Go over all the various little bits and bobs. Starting with the last one. It's got that, and then working back towards the front. Until you've got those really pronounced grooves. And that will work good. We'll get that out of our way. Pick one down. Now that always creates puckers to each inside, so it kind of fish lips on the on the front, so you want to hammer those back straight. But now we've got our preform set up. Now it's time to go on to the tricky part. So we're going to go ahead and heat this up. You can do this with a soft base hammer and a ball peen hammer. I happen to have a tool for this. Excuse me, I'm going to get personal. Pow. You do it with a large cross section ball peen, or you can do it with something similar to this tool right here. This is what we're going to use to draw out the lobes. So use third hand control here, unless you have a power hammer. Again, I'm just using this to aim and create the lobes that I want. just off to the center line. So we're leaving some thickness in the center or the core of the leaf. And this is an accurate way of spreading this material right to where you want it. So now we're working those lobes like you're seeing there. Keep it really hot through this whole process. We want to take and really get this to stretch a lot. We're commanding it to do a whole bunch. So keep it good and hot through this whole thing. And from here, it's really just taking your time and directing the flow of material where you want it to take and make the leaf. 
So I'm using this as like a big fuller to kind of push the material forward like I want it. So it comes out where I want it. And we're just controlling that spread of material. Keep that up. Hopefully you guys can see that. We're just controlling that spread. So I'm pushing, as I'm coming in, I'm hammering and I'm pushing out in the direction I want that material to flow to. And we're gonna do that on back here further. Now once I've drawn this down, once I've drawn these lobes out quite a bit, then I'm going to come back in with the cross peen hammer and hammer and spread this leaf out more. But I want the lobes where I want them first. I don't want to take and spread the leaf and then try to pull extra material out because then I haven't got the shape, the outline shape I'm looking before I spread to get the width in the leaf. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, getting plenty of heat where I don't need it, not enough heat where I want it. So we're gonna take a Again, we'll gain extra width in this leaf as we go. But now we're gonna pull out these, keep pulling these lobes out. I'm going to cool off just this front bit of here because it's getting too hot before the rest of the leaf gets hot. Moss gonna push it just a little bit past the hottest portion of the fire there as well. Again, I'm using a soft face hammer with a hardened tool. This is just a rounded, you know, bob punch, just a round thing. Nothing more than a fullering tool. You can do this with a ball peen hammer and a soft face hammer to hit it with. Okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Nothing to it. Now we're gonna go ahead and spread this out to get into the oak leaf. Get a larger width oak leaf. Keep this around, don't get rid of it. You wanna keep it close by. Same thing with the larger hammer. Gonna keep it close by. But now we're gonna use the peen of a cross peen to take and draw this material, spread this material out in width. Now, as you can tell, it's not matching this. I'm eventually, I'm showing a simpler version of this and just for demonstration and time sakes. But the way I would undertake something that's this elaborate is I would cut it out. I would draw out a big flat area, spread out the material, and then go ahead and cut that perimeter out. But this is a forged method, oak leaf. Not everybody has, has it that easy to be able to cut stuff out like this. So we're starting in the center. 
and we're just going to spread the leaf just like any other leaf would be spread. Start in the center and draw out towards the edges. We're using the cross of the peen to make sure we don't grow any more in length. but we actually spread it in width. Then we can come from the back side with the flat of the hammer and help clean up those front side fuller marks. We'll get another heat on that. We're starting to get that to shape now. Once you're getting down this thin, once you're getting down this thin, it's going to heat very rapidly. So, man, keep the pedal of the grindstone, keep your, keep your shoulder of the plow, and keep at it about this time. Don't let your attention get away from you because it will burn very fast. Did you burn your steel right there, Roy? Why, yes, I did. Thanks for asking. <laughs> We're just using the flat of the hammer on the face of the leaf. Got some of these high spots. Flipping it over onto the back side of the leaf. Okay, and there you have it. So there is a white oak leaf, or roughly similar to a white oak leaf. Again, this is a simpler version of it. If you want it the other way, I would just suggest spreading this out and then cutting out the profile um, to be where you need it to be. But this is a great way of exercising forging control with what you got in the shop to divide up your material and, and get it to flow where you want it. So we'll go ahead and heat this up again. This time I'll switch from my regular forging hammer to one that has a 3 8 inch radius fuller on the end, or peen. We're going to switch up to that one. It's a little bigger hammer, but that's not necessarily a good thing. It's just what fits it. And now we're going to take and use that with the cross peen in mind to take and go ahead and cross peen the surface just like as if you were to texture a leaf. We're not using overlapping blows, we're using every other blow. And I'll explain that in a second. When you're doing this, you're not wanting to take and hit one blow right on top of the other. You want them to come down right next side each other. just like that. So that way you get that texture. Now you can very well just leave this plain if you want to. Uh, you can also cut veins in it. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it just like you see it here. So the next portion. We're going to flip this piece around. We're going to grab it from the end we just worked. And now we're going to take and flatten the areas that will eventually be mounted to the wall or it'll get screwed in and the leaf will wrap around. So now that it's hot, we need to think about which way that we're going to be bending this. We need the leaf to wrap around to where the texture side is the show side. So there is a left and a right to a curtain system. So you know, if you've got dual curtains, you're going to have a left and right. Uh, if you only have one curtain, you're going to just bend it whichever direction and just make sure that you punch it on the back side of the leaf. So this way the leaf will wrap around to where you want it. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and bend, oh, I don't know, about inch and a half of material there. Just to where it looks like that. We just want a nice little 45 on there 
It doesn't even have to be a hard bend. It could just be over here. You can do it over the horn of the anvil, whichever floats your boat. So we're gonna do that there. And then we're gonna come in here with this hammer and we're gonna just take and flatten these areas down enough here and on the very end to be able to put two punch marks there. We're not going to finish the punch marks all the way through. All the punch marks are there for is to create a recess for the head of our screw. We will drill these holes out to the appropriate size, whatever size you want to. All they are there for is just to take and create a recess for the head of the drill bit. So we're going to get that area hot again. And once it's good and hot, we will be able to take and do hopefully the hammer work and the punch work all in one go. Well, let's see. All right, here we go. Gonna flatten that corner out, the elbow, and then on the very end of it, flatten it out. That's gonna create two wide little areas. And on the back side of those, we're gonna take our punch. And we're gonna punch straight down. Just like as if you're gonna punch through the piece, now, if you want to punch the piece, you can. I'm just doing this as a recess. It's a style choice for me. Um, if you want to punch them all the way through, choose a much smaller punch to do so. That's got that taken care of. Hammer that straight. She's good to go. All right. Ah! Dropsies. All right, clean it up real good. There you have it. So you got those two little punch holes. Hopefully you all can see that well. I think you can. So we've got those two punch marks. That creates nice recesses for the screw holes there. So that'll get screwed to the wall and it will look like this. So this will be vertical. Now we need to take and heat this piece up and bend it around. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes and I'll be right back with you. Once these holes are drilled, then we can heat this and we can swoop this leaf around to where it kind of almost stands upright. It's not going to be horizontal and it won't be perfectly upright, but it'll swoop almost at a diagonal upright. And that's what we're looking for. So I'll be right back with you. As soon as this piece is cooled down, I was able to get some drilled holes in it and we'll do the final little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and bend away from our textured in here. I've got those holes made. We're gonna come about halfway up this stem work here. And that's how we're gonna start making our bend around. We want our leaf to bend ever so slightly as well. It doesn't have to bend a lot. The leaf is just kind of a little bit of the finial detail. So you can shape that however you like. But we do need this to start coming around from the wall. So now it's scooping around like so. And we need to make sure that it's running in the right direction that we're wanting it to go. And since this is a rougher forging here where we're having texture on the stem, it's okay to be hammering on this with your hammer, putting additional little hammer blows in there. It will not affect the texture whatsoever. If you're worried about that sort of thing, you may wanna go ahead and use a soft face mallet of some sort. We're gonna get that thing heated right back up. Now what I'll probably do with this leaf after this demonstration is over, I, I will actually probably cut it out to where it will resemble this type form leaf, this, these really narrow lobes. Uh, in the end, I'll just take a plasma cutter and just plasma cut that out and file it real quick. Uh, just so that way it matches the other leaves that I'm making for the curtain tiebacks in my house. But I wanted to show you the simple forged version of it. Uh, again, for those of you that do not have plasma cutters and, you know, things of that liking there. So, all right, so this is getting a twist that I'm looking for it to have. And it's wrapping around the front exactly the way I want it to go. We're just giving it this little bit of a swoop to it. I'll probably give the leaf a little bit of a back curl just to give it some life as it comes around. 
and that's getting, that's actually looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and keep tweaking it up that way just a bit more. Um, it needs to come up just to fuzz more, and I need to get a little more bend back here in this straight section. Put the parts that you want to bend of this radius now down in the fire and keep the parts that you don't want to bend up out of the fire or off to the left or right of the fire. That way you can focus your heat exactly where you want the bending to occur. Again, be super careful at this stage um, because it is really easy to just burn this right off. So that's gonna come up. So it'll be like that as it comes around and comes up. So that's doing good. Looking good, looking good. Gonna hammer that just a little bit, give it some more. Texture as it goes. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna take this a little bit of the bend out of that. All right, I'm ready to stick the part that has the drill holes back in it. We're gonna get just a little extra bend right in here so it comes so it comes around just a little bit better. All right, so now we know I need to take that down right around like that a little bit more. Oh, went the wrong way with it. Go figure, right? Yeah, so there we have it. So now it wraps around roughly the way I'm looking for it to be. Uh, that took him out of it. Now once that's screwed onto the sidewall or whatever, that'll have roughly that oak leaf look that I was going for. So that's what we're wanting. Consequently, you can also mount it the opposite direction if you feel that that looks a little bit better. Totally up to you. So now I'm gonna heat this piece all back up if I can, I'm gonna start brushing off some of the scale of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush it down. You can use a wire wheel on, a, on an angle grinder and lock this in the vise afterwards, that's fine. Uh, you can get a good effect by doing this as well. After I'm done, make sure you stay to the end of the video and I'll have some finished photos, hopefully, uh, right there that you guys can take and check out uh, on the end of that end little project of it being installed there. So uh, be sure to check that out here. We're gonna go ahead and finish this off. And that's where we'll leave this video here. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. For finishes on this, you can brass brush this and then do a little boiled linseed oil finish on it. Uh, just, you know, after it's been cooled down, you know, not where it would blacken it. You don't want it to be a heat finish. Uh, you can wax it. I am most likely going to brass brush this uh, once everything's all said and done. And then once I get it brass brushed to highlight all the things that I like about the piece, once I get the brass brush finish done on this, that's when I'll go ahead and uh, just spray lacquer it. That's fine for me. Um, you can do whatever type of finish you like, whatever traditional finish you want. I'll just use the Rust-Oleum clear enamel finish on it, and that should be sufficient. So, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave, it a, leave a like and let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. And as always, God bless you, and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.